One time I was uh, a blooped and I came there and we were talking and somebody said something about India. And I said, oh, I would like to go to India. And Prabhupada said, for what, sightseeing? I couldn't answer. It's very interesting because I left again. I mean, my record, my history is not so great. And um, when I was living in San Francisco as a householder, then I learned how to program computers. This is in the before Windows. Uh, and Spiritual Sky Factory, the old incense factory in L.A. And I didn't know about this, but Dianonda later told me they wanted to know if they should buy a computer. And Prabhupada said, yes, get a computer and Umapati can run it. And I had, I had not communicated with Prabhupada anything that I was, you know. So when I did come down to Los Angeles and get back into the swing of things again, I started programming the computer. And um, on the morning walk one day, on the beach, Prabhupada said to me, can your computer tell how many grains of sand there are on the beach? And I said, no, Prabhupada, you would have to tell the computer. The computer, you know. Uh, and then Srupa Damodar said, does that mean there is a brain superior to the computer? And I said, the computer is not a brain, it's just a stupid machine. And then Prabhupada seemed satisfied with that answer. <laughs> he didn't say any more. When he got to England, all right, I spent a week in England, and it never stopped drizzling. I saw the sun when I got there, and I saw the sun when I left. You know, and it, it drizzled. There's always this fine drizzle. You'd hang up your clothes to dry. They'd be wetter. When, and Prabhupada said, he said, it says in the Vedas that a place where the sun does not shine is a condemned place. And often when Prabhupada would talk about his spiritual master, he would start to cry. And one time on Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's appearance day, I watched Prabhupada do Arti, and you really felt he was offering it to a spiritual master. You could just feel he was really offering it. There was something about just the way he, he stood or the way he moved his arms, but you could really see he really meant it, that he was offering this to a spiritual master. So I was typing a list of devotee names and their karmi names. And Prabhupada told me also to type that we should refer to the devotees as Prabhu, and I put that on there. And Prabhupada said, when you get to the end, leave some space at the bottom of the page. So I came to the end, and I said to Prabhupada, I'm finished. And he said, did you leave some space at the bottom of the page? And Prabhupada said, yes. And Prabhupada said, now type this. And he dictated, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini. And I offer my respectful obeisances unto Bhakti Vedanta Swami, who is very dear to Krishna on this earth, having taken shelter at his lotus feet. And I was, and I had never heard this before. This was the first time. And I was amazed that he could dictate obeisances himself without being embarrassed or proud or anything, you know. It was as if he'd said, you know, get the pound of carrots and two pounds of rice, you know.